Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 26. So we're going to start with a basic arithmetic question today that deals with uh, calculating a commission on a sale. The question reads, Mike earns $325 per week plus a 7% commission rate on all his sales. If he sells 3,720 worth of merchandise in one week, how much will his total earnings for the week be? Okay, so when you look at this question, you have to uh, realize that Mike is getting money from two sources. Okay, so on one side, he has his fixed weekly rate, which is 325, and then he has his commission rate. Okay, and that can vary from week to week, depending on how much he sells. So in this specific week, they're telling you that he made 3,020, uh, sorry, $3,720. So in order to find the commission, rate on that sale, you would multiply that amount by 7% and that would give you the commission. Okay, so you would set up your equation like this. Um, again, we have 325 for the weekly pay and then to find out the commission rate, all you do is you multiply 7% times what he earned this week, which was 3720. Okay, so his commission is $260.40, and all you have to do now to find out how much he made this week would be to add that to his fixed weekly pay of $325, and that gives you $585.40, which is answer C. Okay, question two is an applied arithmetic problem, and this involves histograms. We haven't done histograms before, so I thought it'd be worthwhile to kind of have a look at them. So the question says the histogram below represents test scores. How many people scored less than 20? All right, and again, anytime you read a graph, you have to follow three steps. First thing would be to read the title, which I forgot to put here, sorry. Uh, second thing, you look at the y-axis, which is the vertical axis, and this is telling you the frequency or the number so you can see that we go from 0 to 25 in increments of 5. Next, you're going to look at the horizontal axis, or the x-axis, and this is looking at scores. So we have uh, kind of the first batch is from 0 to 20, then it goes 20 to 30, 30 to 41, etc. All right, and what you have to remember with a histogram, even though it looks a little bit confusing is that it's like having a bar graph but except that your bars are completely squished up against each other okay so just consider each of these uh, sections as a separate graph and the question was asking how many people scored under 20 so essentially you would look at that first uh, section okay from 10 to 20 and then what you would do is you would look at the y-axis of that bar within the histogram and you can say that it's 15. So there's 15 people that scored less than 20. Actually, this histogram, I didn't write the scores correctly. It should be from 10 to 20 and the next section go, should go from 21 to 30 and so forth. Okay, but for the question, um, we are able to answer it this way. All right, so that's all you have to do when you read a histogram. So your correct answer here would be answer A. All right, question three, excuse me, is an arithmetic uh, question. So sometimes in the GED, they give you these kind of puzzles where they ask you what the sequence of a, of a set of numbers is. Here they're telling you what is the next number in the sequence 1, 5, 10, 16. And this is just, you're just going to have to figure out um, kind of the interval between each, each of these set of, sets of numbers, right? So, so you can, I don't know, you can, if we look at the first interval between 1 and 5, um, how can you get to 1 and, from 1 to 5? Well, one option would be to um, add 4, so that would be one option. The second option would be to multiply 1 times 5, right? Okay, so let's test our hypothesis. Um, so if we said that uh, we multiply by 5 and we look at the second gap between 5 and 10, um, 
it wouldn't work out, right? Because five times five would be 25. So that's out the window. So let's go with the adding um, sequence. So if we say one plus four is equal to five, and then from five to 10, you would have to add five, right? You would say five plus five is equal to 10. So what's the next number in the sequence? Yes, absolutely, it would be six, right? One plus six, 10 plus six is equal to 16, which means that the next number would be one plus uh, 16 plus seven, correct? So 16 plus seven gives you 23, which is answer A. All right, so this is kind of like, you know, there's no really kind of system to, to use it. Just try several numbers until you figure a pattern out. Next question, question four is an algebra problem. And it says, what is the value of 50x minus 8y when y is, e excuse me, when x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 2? All right, so all you have to do here is take those values that they give you for y and for x, and you just plug them into your equation. All right, so instead of having 50x, we're going to have 50 times 3, which is the value for x, excuse me, minus x, uh, 8, instead of y squared, two squared. Okay, so if we go ahead and solve that, um, 50 times three is 150, and then uh, two squared is equal to four multiplied by eight, that gives us 32. So now you're left with 150 minus 32, which is 118. So our correct answer would be C. And the final problem today is a geometry problem, which asks you to look at the angle of a line. So the size of the angle AOB is 137. Find the angle of BOC. All right, so you might look at this problem and it does look a little bit intimidating, um, but it's actually incredibly easy if you know one fact. So the angle of a straight line is 180. Okay, and we know that angle AOB is 137. So what that means is that in order to find the missing angle BOC, all you have to do is subtract 180 minus 137. And that gives you 43. Okay, does that make sense? I mean, every single of these angles has to equal 180. Okay, so um, AOD plus DOB plus BOC all have to equal to 180. Okay, so that's how you solve these problems. Just remember, a straight line is 180 degrees. All right, so your correct answer would be B43. Okay, folks, well, I hope you found that useful. As always, thank you ever so much for your time. Thank you for watching, and have a great day. 